Okay, we're nearing the end of section 1.2, and we're talking about symmetry with functions. And a function, or a, a graph, I should say, uh, is symmetrical about... Uh, there's three types of symmetry with graphs. There, There is. Uh, there are. So you have your x-axis here, and you have your y-axis here, and you have the origin here in the middle where they intersect. Now a function is symmetrical about the x-axis. If you could flip that function over the x-axis and it will produce a reflection basically, uh, a downward reflection of whatever it looked like upwards. So for example if I have the graph of x squared which looks like this, a flip over the x-axis or a reflection over the x-axis would look like this. Okay, um, now the reflection around the y-axis is a flip like this. So if I have the graph of x cubed, which is that, then a reflection about the y-axis or a flip about the y-axis would look like this, right? And then there is a third um, type of reflection, if you will, and that's about the origin. And I like to think of it as a 180 degree flip of a function. So if I have the function, uh, whatever this is, then a 180 degree flip would be uh, turning, let me get a good one, would be basically turning it this way and this end goes there. So you could also think of it as a reflection about the y-axis and then a reflection about the x-axis. So you could think of it as both. But it's going to be... Let me just try to visualize it. Something like that. So it's going to flip first like this and then that's going to flip. So yeah, that's right. Uh, so that's your different types of symmetries, and we can test for those kinds of symmetries. If you plug in negative y for an equation, okay, and you get the you get the same equation um, after you know you get rid of the negatives with squares or even or even exponents and stuff like that. If you plug in negative y and you get a resulting the same value for an equation, then the function is uh, symmetric about the x-axis. If you plug in negative x and you get the same equation you you know plugged negative x in for, then the equation is symmetric about the y-axis. And if you plug in both of these and you get the same resulting equation, uh, if you result in the same equation that you plugged in, then it's symmetric about both the x and y, and therefore it is symmetric around the origin. So let's do an example with this. Here I have y is equal to 4x squared over x squared plus 1. So let's plug in um, negative y. Okay, so when we plug in negative y for y, we get this. And this is not equal, well, I shouldn't do that. This is not equal to that. Can't do it. So it's not symmetric about the x-axis. Okay, so now let's do, let's plug in uh, negative x. Oh, not for y. We're plugging it in for all instances of x. So negative x here, negative x here. And we get y is equal to 4 times negative x squared over negative x, oops, negative x squared plus 1. And this, because we have, po we have even uh, exponents here and here, um, that cancels out the negative, because the, neg the t negative times itself is a positive. So we get, we still get 4x squared over x squared plus 1.
and that is the that is the resulting equation is the same as the original equation. So yes, um, this function or not yes this function this graph is symmetric about the y-axis. Okay, um, and since it's only symmetric about one axis and not the other, then it's not symmetric about the origin. And actually, your graph is going to look when you graph it's going to look something like that. And you can see it's only symmetric about the y-axis and not the x-axis because if it was symmetric about the x-axis it would it would look like that. Or yeah, it would look just like this. Only symmetric about the x-axis. Um, but it's not.